Hi everyone, thank you for joining BioTeach for this video specifically aimed at students who are trying to decide between doing a BTEC qualification versus the A-levels. Thank you also to all of you who've been supporting this channel so far and to all my students who have been bigging up this page on their social media, I really appreciate it. So I got to thinking about the time of year that we're in currently and where lots of you are waiting for your GCSE results. I know with the COVID-19 lockdown, a lot of things have been up in the air and many of you are trying to weigh up what you might do next in terms of your progression through education. You'll soon have to decide whether you stay on at your current sixth form or go to another college and also decide which course you want to do. This video is going to talk you through some of the pros and cons of BTEC and A-levels and tell you a little bit more about the qualifications and I hope it helps you make a decision. I should probably say that I've taught on both programmes for six years now and I know more about the applied science BTEC than any other, but a lot of what I say will probably apply across other BTEC qualifications. I teach biology A level, so I will mainly be referring to the science A levels in this video. So let's start by talking about the traditional A-level qualifications. Most places will ask you to pick three subjects of your choice and see them through for two years. The subjects will of course be dependent on what you wish to pursue as a career. If you have really good GCSE, some places might let you study for A-levels. There are about 12 practicals or lab experiments that are spread across the two years and depending on where you study you might have mock exams or practice tests throughout those two years. Lots of places will get students to sit AS levels after their first year. And providing you do well in those, you will progress onto A2. Essentially, your final grade will be based on the exams that you sit at the end of the second year or year 13, and the grades range from A star to E. One of the key things that appeal is that they're an exam-based qualification, which means there is no coursework. There are a range of BTEC qualifications that are equivalent to three A-levels, and this is known as the extended diploma. There are other quals like the certificate and other diplomas which you can do, but it is the extended diploma which ultimately gets you enough UCAS points to get into university, and that's what I'm talking about in this particular video. So with the BTEC qualification, we're largely assessing students on coursework or assignments. The old BTEC qualification a few years ago did not have any exams, but most places now have moved on to the new qual, which has a total of four exams. Usually you would sit two of them in the first year and two of them in the second year. And while studying these exam based units, you would have around four coursework units in the first year and six coursework units in the second year. The grading for BTEC is based on passes, merits and distinctions for each unit and at the end of the second year you get a combination of three grades that range from PPP to D star, D star, D star. The P stand for passes, the D stand for distinctions. So now that you know a little bit more about the courses, let's compare them side by side to identify some pros and cons. The first comparison point that I want to look at is exams. On the A-levels, all of your exams are at the end with no chance to resit to better your grade. For the BTEC though, your exams are spread out throughout the two years. You've got two exams in the first year and two in the second year, and resets are allowed dependent on the centre rules, i.e. the centre that you're sitting your exams at or the centre that you're studying at. The second comparison point I've got is the practical activities. For the A-levels, you've got 12 practicals throughout two years. On the BTEC, you've got at least two practicals for most of the units, and a total of about 14 units. So in theory, you've got anywhere between 20 to 26 odd practical activities. The third point is coursework. Obviously, on the A-levels, there's no coursework at all, whereas on the BTEC, it is mainly coursework based, and that coursework has very strict submission rules. But you do have two chances to submit to get the higher grades of the distinctions, as long as you meet the basic submission rules in the first place. The next point I want to look at is grade equivalency. The table here shows you the grade equivalents compared from A-levels to the BTECs. Essentially, three A stars are equivalent to three D stars on the BTEC program because they're equal to the same number of UCAS points. It's the same for three A's being equivalent to three D's on the BTEC program, which is equivalent to 144 points, and so on until you get to three P's on the BTEC, which is equivalent to three E's at A level. So that hopefully breaks it down and makes it 
easy for you to understand how these two qualifications are pretty much equal to each other. And the last point there is looking at universities. Now, A-levels being a more traditional qualification is accepted in all universities. If you want to study subjects such as dentistry, medicine or pharmacy, the A-level qualifications are still preferred over the BTEC qualification. But the BTEC qualifications are widely accepted. Most Russell Group universities will consider your application with a BTEC and some ask for an additional A-level on the side. So that's worth researching if you do wish to go to a Russell Group university. And it's also dependent on what course you want to do. At the time this video was made, Oxford and Cambridge universities were not accepting BTEC qualifications at all. If you are looking to study a BTEC program, but want to study something like dentistry, medicine, pharmacy, biomedical science, any of those subjects, you may have at least one extra year to study at university before you get accepted onto the course. And I think the reason for this is mainly just for universities to make sure that you've got a good foundation of knowledge before they progress you through their degree courses. When we think about the perceptions of A-levels versus BTEC, I think we all probably agree that most people regard the A-levels to be a better qualification than the BTEC, but I really want to use this opportunity to set the record straight on this debate. I'd argue that the BTECs are tougher than the A-levels in a number of different areas, and mainly in terms of the strength in the skills that both of these courses give you. First of all, if we look at the content, BTEC students learn A2 content in their first year or year 12. This is a huge jump from GCSE, but the jump is made easier by exciting experiments and practical assessments, so you can learn by doing. I would say that the breadth of the content on the applied science is wider than the A-level sciences because you learn more about the current developments in science in one of the examined units of the BTEC programme. The next skill that I think is quite important to look at is the time management skills. With multiple assignments being set at the same time on the BTEC program, you very quickly have to learn to become good at managing your time and prioritising your workload in order to meet the deadlines. On the A-level program, you also learn time management in terms of revision, recapping theory and completing homework from lessons. But we all know when exams are a long way away, the revision does not always start from day one for all students. BTEC is a largely independent learning program and whilst we use a lot of textbooks and PowerPoint presentations from classroom resources, there is a requirement for students to read around the topic area to get the higher grades. So students tend to develop really good research skills. As the A-levels do not have coursework, there is not a great need to carry out additional research, but of course if you do, it does help. I find most of my A-level students focus on textbook learning and not so much on extra research when they are on the A-level programme, and part of this might be to do with time constraints and having to cover a lot on the syllabus. Report writing skills is definitely a strength on the BTEC programme. With at least 20 odd experiments on, on that programme, students become accustomed to writing scientific reports, which gets them ready for university, particularly if they're going to study a science based subject. Of course, on the A levels, this is also a skill in terms of the 12 practicals that you carry out. You will gather data, you will carry out statistical tests and form hypotheses. All of those skills are really valuable when you go to university, but I think with the sheer number of experiments on the BTEC, I think you get a little bit more practice on that particular programme. The last point I want to look at is peer perception. With the A-levels being a more traditional qualification, I think there's a whole load of people in the educational world who do consider the BTECs being a lesser qualification than A-levels, and I think students on the BTEC generally feel that they have a point to prove to their A-level counterparts. The BTEC qualification covers all of the A-level content. Okay, so I've talked for ages now, and I hope that information was useful. I should add before I end that everything I've said is from my own experience of teaching on both of these programmes, as well as my observations of students in the last six years, I do not intend to persuade you to choose one course over another. My aim is simply to explain the similarities and differences so that you can make an informed decision. Ultimately, the grades that you achieve at the end of either of these courses will be reflective of the effort that you put in. However, you have to consider whether you're the type of learner who performs better in coursework than in exams and let that help guide you towards which course might be right for you. If you've got any questions about this or anything else, please leave me a comment and I'll get back to you. Please like this video and share it with your friends who might also find it useful. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this, as well as the educational content I've already shared. Thank you so much, everyone, again, for watching. Bye for now.